But I'm just saying that we as men also need to start saying, hey, I want my I want my girl to be beautiful every day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch me. Have you washed your hands? Hey, chief. <laughs> you really not gonna see me with a bonnet <laughs> again? You don't get hand sanitizer and hand cream, baby, baby. No, man, baby, your nails are. Yeah, what's happening? They are. They agree. There's a distance between <laughs> the the skin and the acrylic. <laughs> but what are South African in South African men in 2024 struggling with? Uh, I think South African men are struggling with like finances. Not just South African men, but South African boys as well. We see young men um, thrown into the pressure of society of, of providing very early. So boys aren't allowed to be boys anymore. Yeah. You know, what are some of the lessons you hope to teach your future children? Um, would you instill the same teachings that you've learned as a man onto your daughter and son? Yeah. I only think for me, the reason I wouldn't raise them the same is because life won't treat them the same. So if I, if I raise a boy and a girl the same and say, yo, everything's, you know, exactly the same. I, it's, it's, it's low key hurting them in the future because my son will not be treated the way my daughter will be. But I won't teach my daughter about sexual abuse and not teach my son about sexual abuse. Because mm. at the end of the day, the people that are sexually abusing our daughters are our sons. Mm. So they're going to learn the exact same things. They're going to learn how both learn how rough life is. Because mm. you're going to teach your son that t uh, the world is rough and your daughter's going to grow up soft. When the world is rough for your daughter, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to no. really upset. But, but, but. Excel Sharp and Who's it? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Seated with Levo and Tato Rampedi. It feels amazing to yes. be back. I think I even forgot that I'm a podcaster. This feels amazing. How are you doing? We haven't done it in so long. We've done this in a very long time. If you guys do not know me, I'm your boy. I'm on my YouTube, Tato Rampedi. And man, we just love having uncomfortable conversations that we feel like our you know, fellow brothers are too scared to have. Like, young men, old men, all types of men struggle to open up about how they feel, about their emotions, about their experiences, about their wellness, their mental health, physical health. And we're just going to have a podcast which is talking about those different things. But at the same time, like, we love to laugh. We love mm, to have a good time. So literally. we try to make those things comedic. And today's episode is very, very exciting. Yeah, so today uh, we took our opportunity to get a... Uh, hey! Sorry. Hey, continue. <laughs> we took the opportunity to go outside of our creative zone and let someone else actually handle this brief today. Um, and we're excited to see because the topic today is what are South African men struggling with in 2024? And we're going to touch on to so many subtopics such as like, you know, what defines being a man? Is it the men in your life that teach you, the male friends, or even maybe the women in our lives? Yeah. As a man, what are some lessons that you have learned that you want to teach your future children, for example? Um, do you think women and men are equal? It's a bit of a controversial one and so, so, so much more. Yeah. But before we go into our favorite part of uh, the podcast. Seated. We're going to go into how are you? Oh, yes. But before we do how are you guys, <laughs> uh, I want to tell you guys something very, very exciting. Like I mentioned earlier, this podcast is all about, you know, understanding yourself, making yourself feel better. Mm. You know, it's about addressing things we're going through, but at the same time, pushing productivity, pushing entrepreneurship and pushing passion and pushing, like making yourself the best version of yourself. And that can't happen without you like constantly affirming yourself. Yeah. And Cappy has this amazing brand new campaign, which is, you know, affirmation. So you're basically filling yourself mm. with affirmations. If you I'm guys get it. Affirmation. Affirmation. Which is why <laughs> you guys can see me right now. I'm drinking the Cappy still breakfast, been 100% fruit juice blend. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of fruits. It's really good. But I've got my own a full nation. Yeah, so we took the time to actually write it down. I've never heard Tato's. Yeah. Tato's never heard mine. So yeah. we're going to say it to each other, just yeah. to hold each other accountable in that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Cabby. For, like, I mean, like this is perfectly aligned with us. Yeah. Uh, so let's get straight into yeah, it. You want to go first? I'll go first. Also, also <laughs> like, you guys should also, once you've heard ours, don't be scared to like, you know, say yours out loud yeah. or just even put in the comment section because I think it is a very powerful thing to do. Yeah. Uh, my one is I commit to embracing every experience wholeheartedly, and when uncertain and when uncertainty arises, I welcome wisdom from those who have paved the way. Um, for my one, connection nourishes my soul. Regular check-ins with loved ones keep our bond strong. Be a part of the exclusive Cappy collab by clicking the link in Cappy's Africa bio on the social media to sign up and share your affirmations. So to further go into that. 
I feel like in life we're always so insecure about things that we want to do. Yeah. Like, yo, should I be, you know, opening up this thing? Should I be selling this thing? Should I be doing this piece of content? And yeah. we always try to walk that like journey alone when there's so many people that have done it before. So I always lean towards my mentors, my friends, and people that have walked, you know, the path I want to walk. Yeah. Because there's no reason for me to be a stuntman, a crazy guy who can do everything, <laughs> as a Lenora Superman guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like someone's done it before, so seek for wisdom. Mm. So I also believe in listening to podcasts. Like I love Trevor Noah's podcast. Yeah, I was just going to mention Trevor Noah. That's so great. Serious, yeah. That is the wildest thing. Okay, but um, for my one, connection nourishes my soul. Regular check-ins with loved ones keep our bond strong. Um, as you can see, ChatGPT helped me with that one because <laughs> that is not my English. But um, basically, what I meant by that, I watched this um, brilliant podcast. Uh, well, it wasn't a podcast, but more of a seminar, Brilliant Minds. And Trevor Noah said that we need to understand our friendship currency is so important to us. Like, we need to invest into our friendships because yeah. they really define our mental space, how well we can express ourselves, yeah. how 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 well we can be ourselves, and pushing yeah. ourselves. So, I really just want to touch it with my loved ones and make sure that we build on our bonds and, and work hard yeah. at our friendships, you know what I'm saying, and relationships yeah. that I hold. Yeah. yeah. But time for our favorite time, man. Eh? Yeah. How are you? How are you? I think we should do like a cheers and how are you? Like a, okay. like how, a, how are you? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> you can go first. Uh, yo, crazy. Overwhelmed. I was talking to one of my friends this morning. I was like, yo, dude, like, I'm actually so overwhelmed. Like, and she yeah. was like, why are you overwhelmed? Like, what's up? Then I was like, no, it's this thing and that thing. And like, I'm opening up a studio in like two days. And like, you know, all these podcasts are running and I'm trying to hire more, but it's very difficult. Like, I'm trying to like, you know, make my current employees and people that I work with feel like yeah. they're enough. And do I give people bonuses? And do I like, you know, how do I keep this machine that I've started to run? You know, how do I keep it like running? So I feel like I've got so many responsibilities and I keep forgetting, but luckily I've got such a powerful team. Like Mbali, she's one that really runs Thought Digest. Mm -hmm. So for example, Thought Digest has been doing this campaign with Cappy and I wasn't there for the shooting. I wasn't there for the execution, the editing, the messaging, the liaison between her and clients. So that was amazing for me. Yeah. Um, with Mia, I spoke to client directly. No, I spoke to them. I think Mbali also handled this too. So like, mm -hmm. I'm happy that at least, you know, the people that I work with are helping me do all these many things but it's becoming to a point where I feel like I'm not present enough mm -hmm. I feel like I should start having a little bit more check-ins um, so that's me when it comes to business when it comes to the mental health and the friends I'm grand bro same friends we're still pushing we're still grinding like same same uh, romantically ugh, same same bro like nothing new you know we're still, yeah. we're still doing what we do yeah yeah what about you um, if I start with business as well, I think it's all about how do I start my machines. I think that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, I've been unemployed now for which is crazy. I think I said this the other day, three months now. Mm. Um, it's beauty. My mom even called me the other day. She said like I don't understand. Like by now you should have been like um, like suffering <laughs> or something. Like are yeah. you okay? I was like I was plainly honest. I was like yeah, I have been suffering. You know, I think being unemployed is something that's eye awakening because you know you, there's so much opportunity in front of you but there's also so much lacking in opportunity in front of you you know yeah. and i've just been trying to identify my key points of sales and my key points of trying to produce um a portfolio as, as a content creator that's that's profitable for clients to work with you know yeah. and yeah that's been basically me it's been very hard building that team because i already had a team but i wanted to like make it a bit bigger uh, I'm trying to add one more person to the team, um, a friend of mine as well. Um, yeah, man. So business, yeah, I, it's been good, but also hasn't been great. I think that that's an, a very blessing thing to to say. And in terms of mental health, oh, I was in the dust last week, man. I was really, really low. I found myself just sitting in a sense of sadness and a sense of disappointment to myself only because of impatience and et cetera. You know, I, I truly believe that like, we are our hardest critics. And I think I pushed myself away from all my friends because I, re I knew that my friends would remind me of how great I was. And I wanted to sit in that sadness and disappointment. I don't know why. It was a very toxic thing, which is why, again, my, my, uh, my what is it called? Uh, affirmation. Affirmation is um, just me doing my check-ins with my friends and et cetera, because I really feel as if they, they're my constant reminder of who I am. I look around at the greatness and I remind myself greatness is surrounded by greatness. So that's why I'm, I'm next to these people, you know? 
Um, and then just religion. I just want to touch on my religion. I think I'm going to start doing that. Like, I um, read the Bible last week um, for the first time in maybe like, I want to say two years or maybe like, a year. I've already read the whole book. It was really cool. I liked the main character. I like how they, in the middle of the book, all of a sudden, you know, he, which was weird because we waited so long in the book for him to land, <laughs> but not the point. The point is that, uh, I've already read the Bible in full, you know, but me just coming back to reading the Bible, I was shocked at how much I had forgotten. Mm. And I, I forgot so many stories, so many lessons. So me reading the Bible is something that I've been really actively trying to push, which I never really understood because the Bible was written by man. But I, I, I just trying to do that. Yeah, but that's how I am. Yeah, that's the longest how I am I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> no, it's not really. You said, you said longer ones before. <laughs> but yeah, but let's get straight into the podcast, guys. But before we do that, if you're listening to us on Spotify, please, please, please make sure that you give us the five stars. Yeah, right? yeah. Because we're trying our best. And only, even though there's only two stars in front of you or two stars that you're listening to, we need the extra three <laughs> to make it five stars. We really, really yeah. appreciate that. And if you're on YouTube, please just make sure that you just subscribed. Okay. Yeah. Also, a promo from my side. Hello. Uh, I'm opening up a studio. I think you guys heard it in my how, how, uh, how are you. So, studio's opening up. It's going to be in Midrand. Uh, by the time this is out, the studio is fully functional. So check the description. You guys can definitely book out the studio, which is very, very exciting. Uh, also dropping merch for Seated, like very, very soon. Yeah. Uh, also very exciting. So if you guys want to book out the studio, it's in Midran. It's going to be a podcasting studio. It's going to be a studio for you to do photography. It's going to be a studio for you just to do your content creation in that space. You can hire out gear. You can hire out just the room. There's a bunch of couches, a bunch of furniture, a bunch of different things, a bunch of backdrops. So... Definitely don't be scared to pull through. We've got green screens. Um, yeah. Really, really exciting. Uh, really doing it for you guys, for people back at home who can't afford, you know, to create content by themselves. So if you're a student, there'll be student prices. We might ask you for your proof of registration, though, um, for the year. And then if you are working, there's going to be prices for working. If you're a corporate, there's prices for you as a corporate person. Uh, but yeah, very, very exciting. And merch also coming very soon. If you guys want to pre-order the merch, just comment down below, pre-order. Yeah, uh, and put your put just just comment down below pre-order I'll be able to get your details and then I'm gonna send you a link and that merch is nice guys like yeah, really cool. it's, it feels good the quality is great um, yeah. we're loving it and, and we just get a sense of reminder of like how we are willing to be seated with ourselves and have uncomfortable conversations with ourselves which is why we're starting the merch it's kind of like cause you know we, we guys I mean yeah selling products is cool and stuff but we're trying to build communities here. We're trying to mm. push through our uncomfortableness and we're trying to make sure that we increase your guys' well-being. And what better way than looking down every day and seeing a shirt that reminds yeah. you to just be seated of yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah. so very exciting stuff, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yo, okay, cool. That's enough. Are we done with the promo goals? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, let's get back into the podcast, man. Um, what a powerful topic. What are South African, in, South African men in 2024 struggling with? Um, before we go into that, um, yeah, we can just touch on, on the main topic as a whole first. Yeah. You know, what do you think are the top things? We can like make a top 10 list right now. Yeah. Right so I think, uh, okay. Uh, I think South African men are struggling with like finances. Ding. I think things okay, are yeah. expensive. Like, <laughs> yeah, we're really struggling to take care of ourselves. Like I remember I was in an Uber like mm. two days ago and this guy was like a young guy who was fishing us from MFest. I was with Percy... Uh, Lisa, Dima, and Ne, and we're coming back here to come chill. And this guy is like a young broom, maybe it looks like Leo, but you can hear it's from Pretoria. He's yeah. wearing some merch, I can't remember what the merch is, but like an not like I think it's like an a Godspeed jacket. Oh, yeah, he's like a screw screw from Pretoria, and he's got, got this Uber XL. Yeah, after that, he's like, you know, he's driving us, he's playing banger music. So you can see this guy's a young guy hustling, driving his, hmm. his Uber. Afterwards, he's like, yo, does anybody here smoke weed? You know mm. what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I distribute weed. Uh, if anybody wants weed, let me know. No, 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 no. Mm. So you can see like this young black man. He's pushing. He's pushing. He's Ubering. He's got two jobs already. In he's there, really, yeah, yeah. He's, he's Ubering. <laughs> he's a Uber. Oh, he's a ball driver, Uber driver. He sells weed. And I'm sure he's selling other things, but like, you know, he couldn't sell everything he's selling. So mm. I think finances are the biggest thing young men are going through. I think the economy is, is really taking a hit. Things are very expensive now. Mm. And people aren't speaking about it. I think yeah, like a few days ago, I was at Level and a couple of friends and we're saying that you buying Uber Eats is equivalent to you buying groceries and cooking every day. Like, yeah. yes, you'll have a little bit more food when you buy groceries, but it's like the price point is so similar. So it's like the, 
it's like it's your choice. You wanna have instant food, which is unhealthy, or you wanna buy groceries and live a longer, healthier, better, yeah, you know, week, month, year, and life. But like the price point is the same, and it shouldn't be the same. Mm. Like fast foods and Uber Eats should be more expensive than buying way more, shoes. like times ten, basically. But I haven't really tested that out properly. Yeah, I think I did like you a thing. You said that. You said that. I said it, yeah, because I, I'm not too I think sure. I bought like groceries like the other day. It wasn't that bad, of course. I wasn't buying gang, but it was like eight hundred bucks, right? Yeah. And uh, from what I bought, I know that's gonna last me like maybe like maximum, maybe ten days, two weeks. Oh, that's a lot, bro. So I was thinking like eight hundred divided by ten days is like what eighty rand a day. That's low key, like. But eight rand a day, you need three meals in a day. Now, nah, but keep mind, you're also just paying ten rand for someone to just cook for you, and deliver it to you. <laughs> Extra. Oh, so saying the time value. Yeah, the time, time value also has to be considered. But um, I love the finance one. I want to just touch on that one. I want to say that that's really not just South African men, but South African boys as well. We see young men um, thrown into the pressure of society of, of providing very early. So boys aren't allowed to be boys anymore. Yeah. You know? Um, what I mean by that is like when I was already 16, I was already planning how to be a millionaire. Yeah. yeah I wasn't yeah. thinking, yo, what's on... You know, TV tonight, what, 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 yeah. uh, like I was already thinking to myself, like, yo, I'm gonna study this, I'm gonna become this, I'm gonna get this job, I'm trying to get this promotion by 22, and, and then back yeah, money, 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 which, money. Which, again, like, takes away um, the childhood aspect of a lot of men get to experience, yeah. you know, which adds on to the fact of um, why men are not so vulnerable and stuff, because we've been such a hard, we've been hard hearted for so long because of finances. Finance is a huge problem for men, yeah, especially like budgeting, saving. Uh, financial literacy for black men is actually quite rare. We always at all levels also at all levels, yeah, at all levels of intellect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my second one would be vulnerability. Yeah, because when you're speaking about how, like, you know, high school, you'd never chance to really be a kid. You had to focus on how you know make these millions. <laughs> that prevents you from being like vulnerable in that youth and that age. So because yeah. you're being, you lack the ability to be vulnerable, then how can you be vulnerable now? Yeah, like I know for me, like, oh, dude, it takes a lot for me to be vulnerable with like friends, with, yeah. the, with the romantic partner. Yeah, and to say how I feel, and I look at like even after saying how I feel, I'll always be like, ah, but that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'll be like, oh, this upsets me. This is making me feel like Definitely this. Definitely saying. That. Express myself. I'll be vulnerable, and I'll be like, but those things don't matter though. Because yeah. like as a bro, it's like, dude, you shouldn't be feeling all the things you're feeling. Move, move. Mm -hmm. Like fix the problem. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Which is a good mindset to have. It's good for you to fix your shit, but it's like. Hey man, sometimes you should like feel what you need to feel and take in what you process need to take it, in and man. process it. Process and it. And see it's Because it'll just come back two months later or yeah. three months later. Yeah. Uh, but that brings me to another talk because we've got finance, vulnerability. I'm going to bring in um, the next one, which is what touches on top of those relationships. I think black men. It's bad. Man. I speak from black men because that's my, you know, that's the difficulty level I'm playing on. Um, I'm playing at black man. <laughs> so hardcore mood. I think it's not a hardcore. I think what's the last one? It's 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 a, it's a it's a black it's a black gay woman. That's the that's the last difficulty of life, right? That's the hardest level you can play at yeah, life, right? Black black gay woman. woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the hardest. Yeah, that's the hardest level you can fight at. Yeah. But anyways, um yeah, I definitely hey, harder than a black Transgender woman. Yeah, there we go. You see, that might that one might be <laughs> that's higher. It's a higher difficulty yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah, but my point is, um, well, well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being on the like, you're, like, not, you're, you're not an easy. Yes, you're yes. not an easy. You're not a white. You're Caucasian living hard, man. like Loki. Yeah. If we're speaking about it, <laughs> if life was a game, yeah. That would probably be like the hardcore. Yeah. Like 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 literally super easy white Caucasian man. Yeah, Caucasian man. And like white Caucasian yeah. man from. America. Even Europe. Even Europe. European. In fact, just a white man <laughs> from any country. You're South playing, Africa. You're playing on a good, you're playing on a a good white man from Zimbabwe could be <laughs> living on easy mode, you yeah. know? But after that, uh, what is it? It's a, it's a white woman. No, I don't want to do that because we all, we all agree what's the worst. We all agree what's <laughs> the, the But the middle part is always the one that we all fight about, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, for me, um, living at the difficulty that I'm living as a black man, I truly believe Black men are, are so uneducated on how to preserve and keep healthy relationships. And people are going to come at me now and say, that's wild, Lebo. My boyfriend and I have been, been together for three years. But of those two years, you're teaching him how to love you. He didn't know our relationships. Mm -hmm. Or he had to teach you. Or, mm -hmm. But I'm saying, black people as a whole, low-key, are just really uneducated on relationships, how to build a good relationship, what is required of a good relationship. Yeah. I could not I could not sit here now 
and tell you things that I've learned from other people in about relationships that are older than me that they taught me when I was young. No. Nothing. I would not be able to tell you anything. Also, we <laughs> all have this like we all like we all know what's meant to happen. Mm. Yeah, you must communicate. Yeah, spend time. Like I've got some of the best advice from a girl before. Then I was like, okay, this is someone that I could probably be in a relationship with. Mm. When I enter the relationship with them as a black woman, it's like, oh, but mm. even you don't know what to do. Mm. So I feel like we all also like know what's the right thing to do, but yeah. we lack applying that like you know those applying what we should be doing yeah i think like, we really suck at it bro. even yeah. me even you and i like we men speaking here we're like yo relationship dude i've probably gaslit lied to like mistreated confused um <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm putting my finger down every time like, something says one <laughs> gaslit <laughs> lied to confused you know manipulated done that i've done that one like so many women unintentionally no, sometimes intentionally as well. I've done it. I'm, no, I'm no, not no. going to be an angel here in a sense and say that I haven't done it intentionally. I've done that with those, some of those things intentionally as well. Yeah. But I would say unintentionally. But a lot of those things, I, I, I did them because I thought, you know, you know, you, you watch the movies and you see two people in, deeply in love and this guy has a tough day, you know, this girl pushes him and kisses him. It's not his girlfriend, kisses him, you know. He's like, oh, you feel so sad. He runs home and goes to his girlfriend in the movie and says, something I need to tell you. You know, just go kiss me. And it meant nothing to me. And I love you. And we'll always be together. And the girl goes in and is like, you know, I love you. I Thank you for telling me. And you feel like, now you come back to real life. Like, I should tell my partner everything. So they kiss you. You go home. You tell They say, hey, hey chief. They say, they kiss me at the club. <laughs> she slaps you, takes you home. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? So, a lot of the applications that we learn from movies yeah. are not applicable in your life. I mean, we'll stop saying, guys, uh, uh, you guys can't reference movies. Guys, we all grew up watching content from the youngest mm. age. So you see how kids mm. are manipulated by TikTok and stuff? For mm. us, it was television and movies. Such a huge influence. Yeah, yeah. like how we view lo love, how we view life, co a woman, you know, how to, how, kissing. Success, even. Like, boy. even movies. I'm, you know, I was just talking to somebody. I've never <laughs> seen anybody during a sex scene whoop out a condom in a movie. I've never That's seen a so condom true. rapper being open. I've, I've seen it. maybe in a couple like when they try to be like super, but I've watched a lot of movies. Like so, I've, I've probably seen it once or twice and so I in, can't even in, remember. I, I, I know what you're saying, like in popular, like main, main, have you ever seen them main say, main popular the cinematography, yes. whatever, whatever. It's, it's not seen at all. It just goes into straight, her back hits the thing, something falls, the shoe goes off, yeah. then we're in the bed in white sheets and, <sighs> Yeah. And why is that, bro? They, 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 like, imagine the movie implemented. Oh wait, do you have any protection? Are you, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Want this? Imagine like, the movie yeah. presented consent. It'll be, it'll take, it'll do a lot. It would, but um, yeah, man. So we've mentioned a couple of things. I know you guys are probably like, oh, you guys are not mentioning these things. So I'm gonna try and move on because obviously there's a lot to say that we're struggling with. I mean, we're men. We know what we're struggling with. Yeah. Um, but um, we're gonna go into the subtopic. What when it comes to human relations about life and being a man. What have some people in your life taught you? For example, like we'll go to the first one. Maybe the men in your life could be your father. Could also include maybe like male colleagues, male mentors. You know, it could be. So this is strictly directed towards what men have taught me. Yeah. Can I actually go first in this now? I think touching onto the movie thing, a lot of inspiration and mentorship for men comes from celebrities such as like soccer players, um, rappers, um, uh, movie stars, maybe even podcasters. But rarely does it come from like closer to home, uncles, you know, thing. unless, you know, your home was, you, you, you had a great home, yeah. you know. But a lot of the times people say, you know, I look up to Will Smith. I look up to Drake. I look up to Drake. You know, I'm not, I'm not oh, saying so I... It's real for someone to say like they look up to their grandmother. Yeah, like their hero, the number one hero is... I've, especially heard, it, I've from, heard it before, but obviously definitely... In terms of like all of our friends, who do you think has said a family member? Crazy, no? You know who says that person? Us, like us, our dad. We like we always reference our dad. Yeah, we reference our father as someone, but I don't mention him as like my hero. I mention someone that's like your, your mentor, your educator, me as, yeah. yeah, my educator. But yes, but uh, uh, that's something that I feel as if so. With that, a lot of the times of having a mentor that's so uh, away, you know, men will post quotes from these people like Ronaldo, Messi, whatever, etc. You know, don't give up. You know. How do I say this? You know how men are motivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so a punk. Like, you're a loser. You need to get up and do yeah, the yeah. things. And having a mentorship that is so distant that you can't even communicate and ask follow-up questions is something that men have really failed. 
we we don't like to learn from the men around us because we're so similar. We all taught the same things at the same time. So it's very hard for for Khunze to teach me something new. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? That I didn't already know. It's, yeah, I get you. So you're saying we should be reaching out to people closer to us. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Our, okay. our uncles, for example, you know, I, I know I'm not close to my uncles like that. Yeah. But I do, to a certain extent, do believe they probably do have life experience that I don't. You 100%. Know? I agree with you. I don't know what I you feel about that. I agree with you because every time I've spoken to an older <clears throat> male figure, I've always received such nice advice and it's, mm. a, it's nice because it's also back and forth. Mm. So it's like, I'll speak to Bitu and yes. he'll be like, yeah, okay, cool. Yes. No, because we, we were speaking about age actually and relationships like about two, three weeks ago. And he was like, no, bro, like, look at your uncle, your dad, everyone's gap with their wives is this many years. Mm. And he'd give you like logical reasons to why. Why, yeah. Uh, why there's a three-year gap between... Mm. Uh, you know, mom and papa, or there's a five-year gap between mom and papa. Mm. And then, that was more impactful than maybe me seeing... Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah saying... On a podcast. Saying... Saying, yo, I believe that when you marry someone, you should be this age because... Because you don't get to ask... This, that communication gap is so... so yeah. You know what? Work. You can't DM Trevor Noah and say, yo, by the way, I understood you, you thing, man. But can but you elaborate? Yes. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm talking that I think men... Face and, and just an overall problem of not talking enough. Yeah, so we need to what? So as men, we need to stop being shy. Yeah, to ask for advice, and that's yeah. that's even my affirmation. Like, yeah. like you know, us speaking to people who have walked the path that yeah. I walked. So I think every brother that's watching this, like, man or or woman, like we shouldn't be scared to constantly seek for advice, even if in moments you get that advice that means nothing to you. Like I know yeah. I've asked for advice many times from my mentors, and the, the advice is absolutely rubbish. Mm. But the second time it might be good, mm. or the third time it might be good, or maybe they're just experts in certain aspects of life. Yeah. All we need to practice continuously is like asking, like, "Hey, I'm going through this thing. How would you solve this yeah. problem?" Yeah. yeah, we don't do that enough. Hey, but you could be seated with your thoughts and express yourself. You guys see what I'm doing there? I am trying to align you guys to what we're doing here because that's <laughs> literally what that's what I know. What everything that I said is literally what the podcast is about, bro. Like we're literally here speaking about things. I would never speak to Tato about what I'm, what men are struggling with yeah, yeah, on a yeah. normal day, you know. But these are the types of conversations we need to have with each other. Yeah, we need to normalize the types of conversation. But yeah, I think if you speak about all the things we spoke about earlier, if you're talking about struggling, etc., I think that goes into our next topic of like, what are some of the lessons you hope to teach your future children? Um, would you instill the same teachings that you've learned as a man onto your daughter and son? Will you be a bit more lenient onto your daughter? Yeah. Or uh, like, how do you believe, um, you know, you're going to move in terms of like giving your life lessons to your kids? Because mm, mm, mm. obviously as a man, you only really know how to raise another man. <laughs> I wouldn't say so. I mean, I feel like we have so many interactions with like women, uh, you know, especially romantic partnerships, friendships, you know, cousins, mothers, aunts. So I think there's a lot of things that I could teach them that my counterpart, my wife, might not be able to teach my female daughter. Yeah, true. You get what I'm saying? So true. I think obviously it would be the sole responsibility to teach for my wife to teach my daughter how to become a woman. Yeah. Because my wife has walked the journey of being of a the woman. woman. You would only, only be able to relate to what you've heard. Yeah. But I definitely think my wife should trust me to have seen her shortfalls as a woman and try and teach my daughter that. And, 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 and that's a conversation between my you just guys did that with your wife? Yeah. So like, <laughs> I would say, baby, I've seen that, you know, when it comes to nurturing a romantic partner you like in these things so i'd probably obviously try to get her to improve in those things and then i say how do we teach our daughter to be able to nurture friendships in the future yeah. from a young age because mm. maybe you, you you spoke to me when we were like you, you know, were very like when me, we were I'm dating social. you spoke to me when we were dating and you spoke about how you didn't receive a certain type of nurturing so as 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 the counterpart, as my as the husband, I must be able to have seen or to see my wife's shortfalls and instill that into my into my daughter. So that's, I think I will play a big role into how my daughter's raised. Yeah, but uh, her value system. but also going back to the question, then would you raise your daughter the exact same way you raise your son? Yeah, yes. So my point is, yes, I would. And when there's shortfalls, I would I'd have to have my um, romantic partner help. I think that's maybe where we go wrong. Maybe we should just be raising them exactly the same. But yeah. I wouldn't. I think what, each what would child... You, what would be different? I just think characteristic-wise, like you can't raise people the same because people are not the same. Like People are all who you make them to be. 
Oh, so you have that perception. We all, we all we grow up to be what your space is. We're all, yeah, we're all born yeah. blank, white piece of paper. Then based of every single small interaction we have as we grow, from the tender age of you coming out of your mother's, you know, body, you are being influenced already. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't think is you don't think this person develops character and becomes themselves? Is it they become what you want them to become? Yeah. <laughs> Not, the, not what I want them to become, what the world influences them to become. Yeah, what they, but... What visibility and access they have. So you think one of your born special, you think you're born with the ability to, I think to that, dance? I think that, like, based on the conversations I've had of everyone, there is no, like, direct formula for raising a person to for, to, to be an output of this. So I can't just... Of course. My child might be the most anti-social, non-social media... For a reason, though. Yeah, but I'm saying... But I'm just saying, like, you saying they're black people's I can raise them to be what they want. No, 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 want. no, no, no. As I'm saying, you can't, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't raise a child. And I'm also speaking from what I think is right. Mm. Never raise a child. You can't say, okay, cool. If I do these ten things every day, my child to become like this. Yeah, that's what no. I was gonna say. My point is that we're all born blank, and then based of our interactions and our influences every single day, what happens is what we then influence the person to become a specific way. So, you for example, I could let's say I, I'm really good at being able to play at any pitch. So, like I, anything I hear, anything I hear musically, I'm, I'm able to play. Yeah. That could have been because when I was two years old, there was a lady that used to sing really well every single day around me. Yeah. And then every time she'd sing, I'd try maybe copy her. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had an Alsi when I was two. Every time she'd say, Dore me, I always also be like, Dore me. So I'm always imitating the sound she makes. In that yeah. way, you subconsciously learn different types of pitches. When you're exposed to a piano, you've got good memory now. Now you know, okay, this sound is there, this sound is there. Yeah. So when it's time for you to say, Dore me, or play Dore me, you can play Dore me. Yeah. I only think for me, the reason I wouldn't raise them the same is because life won't treat them the same. So if I, if I raise a boy and a girl the same and say, yo, everything's, you know, exactly the same, I, it's, it's, it's low key hurting them in the future because my son will not be treated the way my daughter will be yeah, treated. But I, okay. So, so for me, I'd be a bit more rougher on the boy, more, a bit more tougher because I understand as a man, like life is generally just, I I know, I know it sounds really messed up, but it is just generally tougher. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't be rough on my boy. I, I'm gonna treat my kids the same way. I wouldn't be rough on my boy. What I would do is that I see women walk a specific type of life. Women walk around men who always caught them every day, that abuse them every day, mm. or sexually wrong mm. to them. So when it comes to my daughter, it's when it comes to my kids, there's two of them. Daughter, hey, there's gonna be men that sexually abuse. Be careful of this. Mm. Son, they are men that sexually abuse. Don't become this thing. Mm. So they're gonna get the same lessons. But then obviously they're gonna apply them differently. But I won't teach my daughter about sexual abuse and not teach my son about sexual abuse. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the people that are sexually abusing our daughters are our sons. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna learn the exact same things. They're gonna learn how both learn how rough life is. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna teach your son that uh, the world is rough and your daughter's gonna grow up soft. When the world is rough for your daughter, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna no, really upset her. But what I meant by that in terms of like being rough and etc. I mean like there's different sets of skills that I think. Like I'm, I'm being the devil's advocate in this, right? Mm -mm, it's your opinion. Don't say you're being the devil's advocate. That's what you believe is. I, I genuinely do believe. Yeah, you this. believe in it. Just I, I can't. You it. can't. You can't raise a woman like a man, because a man there's going to be things that he's going to. That's why I said um, it's so hard to be a parent because mm -hmm. you can only teach from your experience. Yeah. So to teach a woman from my experience is going. To, a lot of the things that I teach are going to be invalid, but a lot of the things I teach are going to be very. Um, as you said, like, um, I want to say valuable for a woman to hear from a man's perspective, you know? Yeah. Like, not every boy is going to love you 100%. Like, you know, a lot of girls aren't, aren't taught that, for example. They're yeah. taught that everybody loves them. Exactly. You know? So I'm going to be honest and be like, no, you know, not every guy's going to like you. They might like you for, you know, your legs. might like you for this, but it might not. You also need to understand, you can also do that. You know, you can also like someone for this and this and experiment. Yeah. But I'm saying... And your son should receive the same way. Yes, yes. And then say, my son you're say... You're going to say, hey, yes. by the way, you are going to like a god because of her legs. Yes. But, 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 but you might person. think it's real it's love, for example. Exactly. Yeah. So they, they need to receive the same information and then they are going to apply it differently. Yeah. I just don't believe it will be the exact... Like, I know what you're saying. Like, same messaging, different... Different yeah. tones for both. Because imagine if, if you grew up and you were taught that, oh, dude, my boy, like, there's going to be millions of women. You're going to find some of them in life and you're going to be attracted to one because she's got a big ass and, like, a nice uh, figure, but her heart is rotten. And don't forget that even though even you're attracted if to even, things, yeah, what matters is the, the heart. heart. <laughs> imagine if you knew that early, chief. If you knew that early, that would make things easier, my man. <laughs>
That'll make things so much easier. Nah, I wouldn't even like half of your guys' content. And then with the woman, <laughs> with, the, with the young woman, um, what fathers do is that they gatekeep them from the world. Mm. Don't go to this thing. Don't, don't do come this. Here. Don't don't do this. Do Imagine this. you just gave yeah. them the freedom. So now yeah. you should rather be equipping them with the knowledge of what to do when they're in that situation. Mm. Not you can't go out, you can't be around boys, you can't date. No, date, but I understand this guy's gonna try to put his. Try um, this when you date next time, you know, like, or they come back with a new me- you, you, and you just keep guiding them. Yeah, you must say, you, you must, I'm, I'm gonna tell my daughter, you're gonna have these feelings of wanting to have sex with somebody. Yeah. And when you have those feelings, you must understand do you yeah. care for this person? And the most important thing is protection. And the reason yeah. why I use protection is because there's STDs and, and there's pregnancy. And STDs do this and yeah. HIV and does I, this. I could put you on a contraceptive, but a contraceptive has these side effects. Yeah. So do you want to uh, have this contraceptive, have s- sex with people without protection, and still be able to get diseases? Yeah. Or do I teach you how to enjoy a condom? Like teach mm. you that sex is still enjoyable to protection. Mm. What's, what's important is the build up. Mm. Like if you build up any sexual environment, uh, to a, a specific peak, whether you're using condoms or not, it's still going to be a very pleasurable experience. All I'm saying is WWE Raw has more viewers than SmackDown. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> oh, no, but definitely that. Um, but going into that in terms of like raising a child, I think touching into like our inner child and our younger versions of ourselves, you know. Um, if you could now obviously like have the opportunity to raise your younger self, yeah. you know, now you know you, yeah. you know how your younger self operated, you know, yeah. what are certain things that you think you would have added as a man that you are now that you think? Yeah. And I was speaking to, I was outside of uh, Monte Casino. We were getting wings yesterday. I was with Percy and I was explaining to him that like most of my life, I grew up feeling like I was a robot, mm. right? I was like, why does it feel like I'm a robot, like an alien who, is learning emotions and feelings, right? And I was like, I remember I used to date an ex-partner and then every time she asked me like, hey, how are you? Then I'd be like, oh, I'm I'm like this. But I never ask her how she is back. So I think for the longest time, I lacked empathy and I lacked the ability to love, care for and feel what other people feel because I I grew up so so hard. Mm. So I wish that like, I was still, you know, grown up to be a hard person who's very logical but I wish there was more empathy that was installed in me mm. so I could feel what people are, are feeling. Do you get what I'm saying? Because, mm. like, for example, if Lebo comes to me and he says sometimes, I'll be like, okay, shame. As my brother, he said, I must, you know, feel empathy. But do I believe in his pain? I think his pain is childish. Yeah, it's rubbish. I think it's rubbish. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So mm. I wish I had more empathy. And obviously, not you. But I'm yeah, I, I know, I know, I know what you're trying to you say. Because I feel the same way about everyone else's yeah, name. So I wish it was more empathy. So I, that's one thing I wish um, I could go back and give myself. Yeah. Is the ability to feel more things, yeah. to be more empathetic, to understand what love is, to be, you know, loved physically too. Because, you know, I've seen it myself now. Like, because growing up, I didn't have much physical love from a father or a mother, like a hug, a kiss or whatever. I'm very physical now. Mm. I'm very touchy. If you've seen me around girls, if I'm dating someone, yeah. they're always here. And, you know, and, and, they, and girls are so, so, pr- so surprised at how physical I am and how much I show affection mm. through my body. And it's like, that's because that lacked. And I think I'm doing it at an, at an extreme right now. Because there's moments where I shouldn't be so physical around my partner. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm chilling on my hand, I shouldn't be kissing all the time around my bruise. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Those things should be happening in the room. I can give her a kiss on the cheek. I can give her affection on the thigh. But sometimes I'll shy a whole lamza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think for me, right, if I could go back, I definitely just, as a parent to my younger self, would let myself make more decisions. And I genuinely, genuinely think that was one of my biggest problems that I think my parents missed out a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot of the things were controlled, what we drank, what we ate, what we, you know, uh, what Studies. school, what school. I didn't even Such choose what high school I went to. I didn't choose, you know, even going to University of Pretoria was also a cost efficient thing because it was a, a, at UP, if your sibling goes to the university, you get like a certain amount off, you know what I'm saying? It's that vibe. Even, even in high school, you know what I'm saying? That's how it works, right? Um, I think it was high school, not UP, sorry. Might have been both though. But anyways, so all of those decisions were not made by me. They were made for me. And what has happened in my late 20s is that I lack molding myself because everything around me molded me. So if let's say Tato is sad, as Tato tells you, 
now that will now make my, me very, 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 very sad because that's what surrounds me. Instead of me saying, oh no, my life is fine. My life is good. My life is, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I let everything around me decide for me. So I wish when I was younger, simple things like, yo, Lebo, you know what? This month you can pick what juices we have for the, for the family. It's your month. You can choose every time when we go to groceries. Yeah, yeah. Or Lebo, please go buy groceries when you're 16, you know? And go decide what you're gonna, what we're going to eat as a family. You know, it, this is what we can cook. Like I, I, I'm just throwing ideas because I really do believe a lot of kids go through this. We don't get to choose anything, mm. even the way we dress in our younger years. Our parents chose everything what we wore. It's only later when you earn money, you go to university. It's a distance that you get to like decide buying clothes. So our own identities are only formulated really late in life. Mm. So I really generally just don't believe I have practice in decision making. And I and 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 that's a very sad thing to say in your in your older twenties, you know. But I'm very aware of it. Something that I'm currently also working on as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yo, hectic, hectic stuff. Eh? Hectic question, you know. Um, I want to touch on to this one because we spoke about relationships and etc. Do men? So, guys, uh, can you guys comment down like? Etc. Every time never says etc. Sorry, yo. I think I've heard him say it twenty times. It's like my word on the podcast to be like everything else because there's nothing. There's no other word for everything else. What just, else? Just don't say anything. Folk, so, so let me try. Let me practice. Mm. The next topic is: Do men want support from their partners? Nice. <laughs> do yeah. So I think. Wait. Let me finish the full thing. Oh. Do men want support from their partners? Do men get support from their partners? And how does how does the support you want look like practically? Yeah, I think I think we do want support from our partners. It just it's very difficult because support can come in like a you know in the means of a woman listening to my problems for the day, and that's very difficult sometimes because like I want support from my partner, but then. I'm too scared to be like, this is tough and that is tough and this is tough and that is tough because I know that I won't be looked at or deemed as a man mm. in comparison to when I don't ask for that support. And that might, and that might be a, a false perception. Mm. That might be completely wrong because maybe when I say, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, maybe my, my goal will be like, oh, Shem, like, you know, mm. wow, he's so vulnerable and he understands himself mm. so much. Ugh, what a well-versed Emotionally intelligent man. Yeah. So I think I'd like more support in that regard. Um, if I was in a relationship, I also think that like support is also very dangerous because I was once in a relationship where my partner gave me all the support that I needed, but that hindered her her supporting herself. So she would live life for whatever she was a student, she'd go to school, do her stuff. After school, it's like, oh, kind of, kind of, we're building an ebook. Oh, kind of, we're building a website. Oh, kind of, we're doing this. Kind of, we're doing that. And then she's helping with all those things. She's basically, my business partner. And in her supporting me fully, I then felt like I was being controlled, which is so messed up from my side because mm. it's like you ask this person for their opinion every single time. Now they're giving you their opinion and now they understand that you value their opinion. Now they're giving you all the support in the world and now you start calling them controlling. Yeah. So I think we need support. We as men just suck at being able to say how much support we need and how we want the support to look. Yeah. So I think one thing we really need to do is that we need to you know, feel that it's okay to yearn for support, ask for support, but describe to your best ability how you want the support to look. Man, I think this one is a very tough one for me. I, I feel very similar to you in the fact of, you know, there is such a thing as too much support and there's such a thing as too little support. I've I've been in the supportive role and I've got in the supportive role and I've realized that there's a very fine line between being supportive and being reliant, mm -hmm. you know? And there gets to a certain stage where you need to understand that your problems are not own, uh, not your problems problem uh, your pro partner's problems excuse yeah. me or the relationship's problems they are your problems so so to a certain extent you need to take accountability for them you need to have responsibility for them and what i've learned is cuz i've been the <laughs> i'm depressed and then you know someone supporting me you know as women are you know women are very nurturing in nature and men take advantage of that all the time you know and for me, I've I've always said to myself, like, the support that I want kind of just looks like, yo, everything's going to be okay. Let me hear out your problems, you know. Let me believe in your goals and believe in the direction you take us in this relationship. You know, as men, I, I believe men should lead a relationship. I believe in gender roles, you know. And with all of that being said, nah, I have gotten the wrong type of support as well, you know. 
And that would be, you know, me lo- looking at a girl and she says, you know, let's just drink today. For example, you know, like let's just drink our problems away or let's smoke cubbly our problems away, you know, etc. And those types of supports, even though it is a form of support, were harmful towards me. So I think, as I said, it's very hard for men to express what type of support they actually want because we've never actually been supported. We've always been independent, money trying, money scheming, hustling, yeah, and entrepreneurs, and also, that's, also, that's the truth. Yeah, that's the truth. Also, but men also have a, a, a bad. We're not good at, at identifying when actually we're receiving support. Yeah, and so I'm saying support needs to be vocalized from yeah. both sides. From both sides. Yeah. Like when you're issuing out support, you must even say, "I want to support you in this manner." Yeah. Oh, right now I'm supporting you in this. I believe that. I believe that yeah. this support will. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we really, really suck at identifying uh, at identifying it and also receiving it. Mm. And I think one thing we both have learned from this is that we need to describe the support that we want and need. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I want to add one more thing now. I'm so sorry. Um, with this whole support thing, I think, I, you know, it's very hard for men to be, I, I use the word weak, very like, you know, meaningly. Um, it's very hard for a man to be weak towards his partner because again, you know, we live in a very, especially with black women, men, black men are very, it's very, they, it's very competitive. It's very competitive. I don't know how to say it. Some men can buy bouquets of flowers every day. Some men drive this car. Some men drive this. So that when a woman sees you breaking down and crying about, hey, having a hard day, she thinks of the guys that do the bouquets every day. <laughs> and she thinks of the guy that's driving the BMW. And she thinks of a better... The guy that's crying. And, the, and, and she thinks that this guy who's crying versus the guy who's got his life together. You know, because I've said this on the podcast. I'm not scared of it. Women love finished products. Yeah. So it's so hard for men to not be finished products, which is why from a very young age, we try to be finished products. Yeah. When in reality, we need to be so patient with ourselves and understand that we are on a journey just as our counterpart is. Women, yeah. women are patient with their journeys. Yo, yeah. at 24, you know, she's still at home. First chair. She's in first chair again, you know, she's trying out a new degree and in a new city because she, she felt like it was a lot of pressure in Cape Town. How, Munna? Men feel like you only get one chance. That's yeah. it. You went to go study, that's it. You know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just trying to... And that, that, yeah. that throws me back to what we were speaking about earlier yeah. when I was talking about our older cousin. He says you should date a woman that's a specific amount of years younger than you. And I think there's multiple reasons why, right? But I think one of the reasons is because women love a finished product. Mm. So if I am 27, uh, I'm a bad example. Let's say... I'm 25. Let's say, let's say Percy. Percy is 22. Yeah. Right. Um, he's turned 22 this year. Percy is 22. He just got a job yeah. this year. He's been working for a year. He just graduated. Yeah. So, he's, so he just graduated. He got a car, got his own place, got a really good job. Mm. He is a finished product to a, a first year. First year, second, second year, year, third year, year for, even university. Even possibly somebody who's in first year working. Yeah, yeah. Because his job is so good. Yeah. But Percy to someone who is 22, 23, mm. it's just getting his. He's, he's, his ball started. Like he's, he's just, just getting he's his just stuff together. Yeah. And then and that way there's gonna be problems with power dynamics, there's gonna be problems with respect. Mm. It's gonna be hard for a woman to submit to you and for her to be her nurture and natural self. Mm. And women hate being around the person that can't make them feel like a, a woman. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Who let them be. Who let them no no not let them be. Who let them f- oh yeah, let them be, let but them let them be feel and feel. But feel is obviously nibbled yeah. by, by yeah. being. True, true. So you're right. Very true, Tato. Which is why I think it's so important Very for true. you to be careful at the age you date because I mean, obviously, this is just based off of levels saying women want men that have finished products and my older cousin saying that we must date younger. But I feel like those two things, and there's obviously 17 other things which can maybe support or counter support this, what we're saying. But like, yeah. No, I, if you guys disagree, you'll definitely let us know in the comment section why. But I definitely agree with Tato and my big because of relation and similar upbringing. But in my opinion, if you look at it holistically, right, Women perceive what they have and say, okay, cool. If I live in res, you know, if I live in res and I don't have a car, if I date someone with a car and a flat, you know, that that is beneficial to I'm, me. I'm up now. That's beneficial. Mm. Men can look at themselves and say, I'm in res, I don't have a car. And look at a girl in res, doesn't have a car and say, you know what? I'm in love. Mm. <laughs> but, I, I, and, and keep in mind, there's nothing wrong. I, I, I love the fact that women have been raised to want more for themselves. We've, we're coming from a generation where women were raised to lo- want nothing from themselves, but just a husband, just the title of being a wife. 
So we are getting to the point of where communication is starting, where we, we as men as well need to start saying, hey, by the way, we also require this. Someone yeah, said to real. me... Even men don't... Even as we're in a stage where we don't want more for ourselves. Yeah. So like men's... Like even I see it with myself, with the people that I interact with. Yeah. Like a lot of a lot of the girls this year, like a lot of them weren't were they even what you wanted as hard as I work. Were, you, were they even what you wanted in initially? They weren't they weren't working as hard as I work. But I'm saying So it's like why would you be someone that works so hard and then build someone who just watches TV the whole day? You but but do you understand what I'm saying? We are we are so lenient and we are, our threshold for acceptance of of people is higher than women. High. Women, again, like I said, like if you put a woman in I'm house, she, she, would, she wouldn't boot any of the people that would No, would never. Like 95 Ever. 95. <laughs> no, no, not if 99. <laughs> of the Maybe one or two, they yeah. could have picked and said yes, but no. The rest, they would never. And you know, women love this whole idea of saying, no, you know, you know, we pick off love. And But realistically speaking, we, we live in South Africa. We need to pick off love, resources, and looks. <laughs> it's the truth. Uh, it's, a, it's the exact same way. It's the exact same way a man you know, can go to the club and look at girls and say, okay, cool, like, you know, I'm the man today. Let me let me invite this girl and what do you drink? And what, 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 And the same way the girl will reciprocate because th- that, I love the club because it, it summarizes relationships in South Africa. Mm. It's the, okay, cool. We are the different men in the club. Yeah, there's some guys in general. Some guys in general. Some guys in VIP. Some guys in VIP. Some guys in super VIP. Yeah. And some guys in VIP actually spending money. money. Yeah, and then we've got the owner. <laughs> yeah. So the owner is the most powerful person in the club. He <laughs> can decide. It's probably in the kitchen. Now, the and as I want you guys to understand, the owner can choose ninety percent of the girls. The VIP can choose eighty percent of the girls. Mm. The general can choose less, and it goes less, and it goes less. And and in life, it's the same thing. I've seen the most ugliest non-personality men dating the most vibrant, most beautiful <laughs> women inside in, in South Africa. And 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 again. I'm not saying it's incorrect, you yeah. know, but I'm just saying that we as men also need to start saying, "Hey, I want my I want my girl to be beautiful every day," <laughs> <laughs> and we also make unrealistic expectations, you know, because when you make unrealistic expectations, expectations are still met. Yeah, you understand that. Yeah. So even though men, they're like, "Don't touch me," have you washed your hands? Hey, chief, <laughs> you really not gonna see with a bonnet <laughs> again? You don't get hand sanitizer and hand cream, baby, baby. No, man. Maybe your nails are. Yeah, what's happening? They are. They're green. There's a distance between the <laughs> the skin and the acrylic. <laughs> but even like obviously those are small examples. But even like you don't have a job. Like if if yeah. you, if you are capable to have a job, it's, it's like, like why is your, your job? You know, it's like why don't you invest in yourself? Like yeah. why don't you have savings? Like, oh, you haven't moved. You, why haven't you moved out your parents' house? Yeah. Like, you know, like small. I'm just. I'm, I know those are like very like. No, well, I believe in everything. financial things. Yeah, but yes, but financial things. Women ask those questions. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes, like you know, I've gotten so many girls that come. Like when I moved into my flat, I had so many girls come into my flat. Kima and I'm staying in a like. I'm, I shouldn't say this on the podcast, but a, a, a very expensive rent in in in, in Central Santon. <laughs> that's not very. You expensive. know, it's it's expensive for South Africans. <laughs> It's expensive for South Africans. A lot of South Africans, I, my, my, my rent could also afford a house in, in, in Midrand. I'm not lying. But my point is, I got girls coming to my place, coming to the top floor, view of Santa, view of four ways more, okay. and looking at me and saying, where's your car? <laughs> Chief, that time that girl doesn't have a car, she eats noodles every day, and, and she doesn't have a flat. But they look at me and tell me, and that was the moment that clicked. And I said, you know what? That's crazy. I'm actually with a hobo telling me I'm a hobo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but anyways, the, guys. That's the most, that's yeah. the most, no, no, let's go to, that's the most uncomfortable thing. I remember I had the similar experience. I was with this girl and she came to my place and then I had left a glass on the side table. We're still staying at the house. Yeah. The side table. And then she left my place. Yeah. She came back that same day. Yeah. And then she says, is this the same class from? That's him, from, the time. From last night? Yeah. Then I was like, oh, like, shucks. Yeah, sorry. I've just been so busy. Kiman, that's perfectly normal, by yeah, the way. Yeah, because That was, happens to everyone. Yeah, because I think I had like, I had shoots and I, it's, yeah. it's my water glass and I was yeah. like, you know, I, sometimes I reuse it. I come yeah. up with the, I went to this girl's place. I couldn't put my, my. Filthy. It's, I couldn't put my, what's this thing? I couldn't put my, my arm yeah. on the kitchen counter. Filthy. I, I just that's how they this is how you are says I could tell you stories eh? <laughs> no uh, yes. I couldn't I couldn't Mate, use the bathroom in uh, confidence I could tell you a story or two I felt just disgusted not even disgusted just so 
confused because how can you come to me mm. and just judge a glass when you live like if you'll be sitting in a girl's bedroom open up the closet guys let me give you guys a tip <laughs> open the closet Open the closet. You might even hear people speaking behind the closet. It's not her roommates. It's the cockroaches. <laughs> Chief, but, but, but guys, more importantly, you know, we also hear yeah, bashing and making jokes. But, um, you know, as a whole, you know, I really do believe in this entire podcast, you know, what men's struggling with, the difference between men and women. The true nature of what we're talking about is that there is not a lot of communication between men and women about what they actually, actually want. want yeah. it's, jo- it's a lot of jokes. Yeah. A lot of jokes, man. Yeah. Sabo well, mm. you know, mm. one round, one minute. Mm. Sabo well, ma blow more. Yeah. But think, there's not a lot of, hey, yeah. Tato, we're going to date, right? If we date, you need to get a job. You need to do this. Yeah. You need to have this. You need to, and I will be this, this, and this to you. Yeah. We never do that in relationships. Never. Yeah. So I think that, that can actually bring us to another conversation yeah. of the podcast. Like, my key takeaways from this is that when it comes to vulnerability, when it comes to my interactions with people, like I need to genuinely be very strict with myself because if I'm not strict with myself, I'm not going to have a purposeful, fun life. Yeah. If I allow shar into my life, a roach. If I, <laughs> if I allow a roach into my life, I'm going to become a roach. Yeah, you must get to the butterflies, buddy. Get, <laughs> get the butterflies, so buddy. So guys, in life, you must invite butterflies. Yeah, the ones that bloom over time, bro. You can even get them while they're still in the cocoon, bro. But I'm just saying, bro, get something that's for you. <laughs> for you, bro. Yeah, for you. 100%. I was going to say, <laughs> big shout out to Cappy. Um, guys, we yeah. will be doing more affirmations next week on the podcast. Uh, we've been taking a break just due to the fact that we've really been pushing, grinding, and trying to bring new things for you guys. Like, we see that you're ending and we're still going hard. And next year's going to be even crazier because we're taking everything, like, to the highest, like, to the highest floor. Yeah. Which is the top. So, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, guys. Um, oh, did you want to say something? Oh, no, I just wanted to say, guys, like, I really, really please hope that you guys participated in this conversation. Even now, if you've just thought of one thing from the podcast you, like, actually don't agree with or I do agree with a lot, please just comment that down. But, yeah, yeah. see you guys next time. Ray-Bans and Catamarans, baby, give me a life. I'll be living a life. Ray-Bans and Catamarans.